Hello, and today we're going to be taking a look at the LTN 92 nav system in this complete guide walkthrough tutorial. The navigation system was recently added to the 747-200, the classic, and let's take a look at that right now. This is a Felis uh, behind this for X-Plane 12, but the L92 nav system is an INS unto itself. And so while this tutorial does take place here on the old school 7.4 Classic, any aircraft in any simulator that accurately recreates the L92 is going to benefit from this complete guide. OK, so don't think that you have to have this plane. If you've got the LTN 92, doesn't matter what flight sim, this video will be fine. Now, I do want to come here with a warning, and that is that this system is not as easy by a long stretch than the newer FMCs or the McDo's. So please don't expect to race through this video in one go. You will likely need to invest a little bit of time but you will be rewarded. It's very satisfying once you get your head around this system and you're able to use it. I've had a few days to play around with it since Felis has it working for X-Plane 12. It's a lot of fun, but uh, <laughs> you will be hands-on. You know, like the newer Airbuses, it's basically the thing more or less does everything for you. Not so. I mean, the older aircraft for a start, you've got to do things. But this system is very much hands-on. But like I say extremely rewarding and so I would say in real you know when I, when I buy real I mean like if you're flying on Vatsim or anything like that I would take into account task saturation and if it's getting to the point where you are a bit task saturated drop down all right so what I mean by drop down is the highest level would be the LTN 92 and you all hooked up that way drop down one level would be to go to your regular VORs your, uh, and using your autopilot heading modes and so on. And so just, you know, don't think you've got to wire everything through the LTN-92 if you can't because of task saturation, then don't, as simple as that. That said, let's get on with today's video. We're going to under... Uh, rather, I'm going to assume that you understand how to fly and operate the plane to a reasonable standard and that you know how to make or obtain a flight plan. We're going to be using a simple one today and we'll take a little look at that now and this here is from las vegas over uh, to lax and so we zoom out on the map there we see it's north america las vegas that i like to refer to as lost wages will be coming out of mccarran international and then i've created this weird kind of a flight plan and you'll see why we're going to include with this towards the end our nav arrivals and departures. So the LTN-92 is capable of doing our nav arrivals and departures, but that is bonus content towards the end for those who really wish to push their capabilities and the capability of the LTN-92 right to the limit of task saturation. But it's possible and we'll show that. And so let's begin with a summary of the system. We'll come back into X-Plane and jump inside the cockpit. This is, of course, the system that we're talking about. There's three of these. We'll go over those in a minute. And so let's take a look at the summaries of the topics we're going to be looking at today. It's going to be a long video because it is a complete tutorial. And so before you invest your time watching this video, let's see if it's going to be for you. And so the LTN-92, we're taking a look at it here is a navigation device built on existing older the INS and the SIVA technologies. It exploits advances in computing technology that was coming thick and fast at that time. We'll see when it's powered on, but you've got five lines of text rather than just one line that was just uh, a few digits. That was it for the old uh, SIVAs. Um, versus the newer FMCs or the McDo's, it's important to understand this became clearly a long time before those. This is a two-dimensional navigation system only, a bit like the Sievers. However, you can put in RNAV fixes. You can, if you knock yourself out, put uh, SIDs and STARS in as well. We'll take a look at that. Bearing in mind versus the newer FMCs and McDo's, this thing cannot control the engines, 
doesn't care about thrust settings, doesn't care about speeds, altitudes, fuel consumption, none of that. The only time it even vaguely takes into account what speed you're doing is either to give you an ETA to a fix, and that's just going to be based on what speed you're doing, and it's going to speed time, a simple calculation there. And the other issue is when, and we'll take a closer look at this later on in the flight, if you're coming up to a turn, think of it like a 90 degree turn in your plan. This thing, if you're going slow, is going to take you closer to the point where that turn takes place and then steer the plane because, of course, the slower you are, the sharper that you can steer the plane. And if you're going along very fast to the same turn, it's going to give you a much smoother, gentler arc into the turn. Those are the only two minor exceptions where it takes into account speed. And again, offers zero control of the speed, just what is it doing? Now, versus the older SIVA INS systems, again, we've said there's more lines of text. We've said you can enter RNAV fixes, and so those are going to be known as your identifiers. You've got your five-letter RNAV fixes. You've got your four-letter airport ICAO codes, such as KLAS, which is where we're going from, KLAX, where we're going to. And then it also includes a database of all the VOR fixes, so those are going to be your three letters as well as your NDBs, and those are typically two letters. So we will take a lot. We will take a look at that, and those collectively are known as identifiers. It can also do custom waypoints, uh, so we'll certainly be taking a look at that because that's a huge part of this. Another important thing is this device will allow you to update it using the IRAC cycle. So for those of you with a Navi Navigraph subscription, Every month you get that updated IRAC cycle. The IRAC cycle that updates the X-Plane, you know, the default uh, IRAC file in X-Plane, the database, this system pulls directly from that. And so this is because I have a Navigraph fully updated to November 2022. That's the time of me doing this recording. You do not need a Navigraph subscription to make use of this. Clearly, if you don't have a Navigraph subscription, you're more likely to have an older IRAC cycle, goes without saying, and this system will simply use whichever IRAC cycle you have installed. So don't get tied up about that. Whatever FMC IRAC you use, this thing is going to use the same. One other big upgrade from this versus the SIVA is it updates itself automatically during flight, and we'll take a look at that. It's actually quite a complex and in-depth way of doing it. it's got three separate ways of doing it and so uh, i look forward to showing you that functionality wise we'll cover how to set up and align the system what the status codes look like entering waypoints to create a flight plan understanding what identifiers are i think we've already covered that and then custom versus reference waypoints we'll look at reviewing and editing the flight plan in totality as well as deleting and inserting specific waypoints within the existing flight plan. We'll look at flying direct to specific waypoints, what crossfill is, and I'll, I'll tell you now, it allows you to type something in here, and rather than having to type it out in triplicate there and there, it's going to fill it over. Uh, we'll take a look at how to do that and what exactly is entailed thereof. We'll look at how the LTN updates itself. And again, there are the three different ways it does it. And you can customize the heck out of that within the submenus. We'll look at how it integrates with the cockpit flight instrumentation. Bearing in mind the old school aircraft, we don't have a nice glass cockpit. And so we're going to be relying almost entirely on the HSI system here. And we'll see how that ties together. We'll look at how to fly a track versus a heading. So, you know, if you're flying north-south, let's say we're flying north and there's a strong wind from the east. Well, if the wind's blowing us, let's say 100 knots from the east, we're up at cruise and our heading we have set here north. Clearly, the aircraft is going to be drifting over to the west, OK, because the wind is from the east. It's going to be pushing us over to the west. That means our track is not north, even though we're heading north. And so we'll take a look at how this system can be used to fly track headings. In other words, it'll automatically compensate for the wind. And then finally, we'll also look at flying offset or parallel to your flight plan. So, you know, you've got a flight plan that's maybe, let's say, got 10 waypoints. An air traffic control says, for whatever reason, hey, 
Boeing 74 Classic, we need you to fly 10 miles offset to the right of track for traffic or for weather or for whatever it is. And this system is well capable of doing that. And then as we alluded to bonus content, the RNAV arrivals and departures. And we'll look at how we can set that up in the system as well. So to do all this, we'll be conducting a flight from McCarran International. That's where we are right now. Not the best camera view there. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. And we'll go on to the uh, McCarran 6 departure that's going to take us onto our custom built way uh, flight plan over to Los Angeles. I'll bring you back at various points throughout the flight as we work our way through all the topics that we've just been mentioning there in the list and we'll uh, end up completing the full flight in total. By the way, all default scenery, everything, the only add-ons that you're going to see in this flight is the 747 by Fearless, which includes the LTN92 system that we've discussed. Graphics are on maximum and I just think, look at this, default scenery here at uh, Las Vegas, we've got the Mandalay Bay Hotel there, the scene, of course, of a big news story not too many years ago. We've got the pyramid there with the uh, the Sphinx and uh, who knows what that thing is representing. There's certainly not the... Uh, well, let's leave that one there. We've got the nice Ferris wheel. One thing I noticed is, look at this, it actually rotates. I realise I'm going a little bit off topic, but, you know, we need a bit of a break because this is going to be really intensive video. We've got the palm trees here. And one thing I also noticed actually got a theme park or a, some sort of fairground rides atop of this massive building. Imagine that hanging off the side of that building. That's sure to get the adrenaline going. Somewhere I've never been is Lost Wages. It is something I would like to do at some point, if at all possible. And if this ride is still going when I go there, I'll be sure something that I do. As we pan over further to the right, and uh, looking that way, uh, we'll be looking there over there somewhere, Nellis Air Force Base, of course, the home of the notorious red flag training. Um, those of you that fly DCS will be well familiar with this area if you've got the Nevada map. But that's it for the intro. So let's come inside and we'll start working our way through. So the first thing I want to uh, point out, as with all of these systems, and again, it is a complete walkthrough, is... You need to not only establish power to align these things, but the power has to be consistent. In other words, you can't change between ground power and APU power while the system is aligning. That needs to be continuous. And the second thing, obviously, should go without saying, is do not move the aircraft while this system is aligning. Now, the manual actually says that loading fuel, passengers, cargo, whatever, is enough to upset the alignment. However, in my experience, I explain doesn't really care if you do do that. And so I would say don't worry about it, at least for now, but just have your finger on the pulse that if in the future Felix makes a change, that could be enough to throw it off. So be aware of that. The other thing I want to point out regarding Felix and how well he's done with this LTN92 system, there is only one page out of the entire system that doesn't work. And that is this one here, CAT, which is the catalogue. This would be like your airline uh, page that lets you store numerous flight plans and juggle those kind of things around uh, custom fixes that the airline uses internally and so on. That is the only page that doesn't work. Everything else works. It's fantastic to see. And so let's crack on. And so while it's not really a 747 tutorial, I am just going to show uh, the purposes of powering it up again. We did say it was a complete one. And so ground, make sure chocks are set. Make sure GPU is on, unless you're going to be using the APU. Uh, come around to the engineers panel. We want battery on. Let me get the sound on as well. Are on. Standby power to normal. And, and here we see ground power on. So we go left and right. So battery, standby, ground power on. Come up to the cockpit and... Remember to get the uh, master buses on here. We need the essential and number two. And then that's not just for the radios, but also for the nav systems. And if you've flown this aircraft before, you'll know that. And here we come, right? So this system has got three parts to it. Okay, so the three separate systems. We've got the pilot side here. We've got the first officers here and the flight engineers here. And again, they've each got their own screen. 
but there's three parts to it, okay? So the first part is up here. This is known as the MSU or the main supply unit, if uh, if I remember correctly. And you can see the switch here has a few positions. This will look relatively familiar if you're new with the newer ones. You've got off, which is self-explanatory. The standby basically does the same as the align. I've looked at the manual. It, I'm telling you, it's the same thing. They even say, um, so I'm not really sure what, what the difference or why they have a standby there. Align is, you know, fairly obvious. You you align the system before it gets ready to move. It takes, it's pretty quick actually, even with the real time. Um, it says it takes up to 10 minutes. In my experience, it's usually less. And then you've got nav here. So once it's aligned, it goes into the navigation mode. And at that point, you can either change the power supply and or move the aircraft. So make sure you got, make sure it's aligned and in nav before you either switch power source or move the aircraft. And then if the excrement comes into contact with the AC or the packs, let's call it because we're in the aircraft, you've got ATT ref. Of course, what I'm really saying is that if the system should go wrong during the flight, you can move this switch over to ATT ref. That's going to give you basic attitude information, but uh, you're going to lose your navigation info. So if it's gone wrong, you've lost nav info anyway. Put it into ATT ref. What I will say, like with all of these systems, if they do come out of nav mode during flight, whether you accidentally turn it off or move it into ATT ref, whatever it is, the only way to get it to realign is when you're next parked still on the ground. All right. So don't think, oh, well, it's got a self alignment in the air and it can update it. No, it can't. The self alignment in the air only corrects for the system as it drifts during flight. It does not allow you to uh, realign it from scratch or to, you know, so be careful. Once you're moving in nav, leave well alone. The other point is if you set it from off straight into nav and that's what the manual says to do. So that's what we're going to do. It automatically puts the system into a line mode, but then upgrades it into nav mode the moment it is ready. And so based on what the manual says, that's what we're going to be doing. And so again, pilot side will go straight to nav and you can see the align light comes on. And so again, worth repeating, don't change power. Don't move the aircraft until that light is done. And we're going to go same here and then same here. All right. Coming down here now, this is the screen that you're going to be presented with when you first see the uh, system powered on and come to life. You can see we've got Felix's name there as well as custom nav date. And you can see there the year and the month. Again, I'm filming this November 2022. And so I'm going to see 22 for the year and 11 for the month. Every time there's an IRAC cycle update, this will change unless you don't have a Navigraph subscription. And if you don't, you're going to see a different month and year here. And so don't worry about that. And you can see to continue here, we're going to press clear. The alignment is one of the few things that you must do across every system. And so that's what we're going to do now. So hit clear to get through that one. Hit clear on the second one. And then down here on the flight engineers, hit clear. Now there's a couple, and there's actually three ways to align this, but there's, and they all work, I've tested them, but the third way is really convoluted and there really isn't much point to using it. And so the first way, like the old school way, you put in your lat long. And for those uh, unaware or unfamiliar how to get your lat long, if we come here to the airports page, we're at Las Vegas, at McCarran International, lost wages, hit on the 10.9, and if we just make this a little bit bigger, you can see our position. And if you take a look here, notice here we're at gate B, gate B. And so I need to get the uh, coordinates based on gate B. And here we can see concourse is ABC. And here's uh, concourse B. And so which gate are we at? We need to find out which gate we're actually at. So let's just hide that real quick spin the camera around and what do you know it's uh, covered up all right so uh let's have a let's have a look see if we can decrypt it well there's uh one two three four of these uh, terminal buildings we're on the fourth one 
and we're on the second peg of the fourth one. Let's see if we can decode that. One, two, three, four, and we're on the second peg. So we're going to be on concourse B, uh, gate there, 14. So if we come over to the coordinates here, A, B, and we'll look down for 14, and then this line here is going to be our coordinates. So north 36, 0, 5, 0, west 115, 0, 9, 0. So, of course, knock yourself out putting those coordinates in. And in the older SIVA INS, that was the only way that you could do it. And I'll tell you what, just for the first one, we'll do this because this is going to feed in nicely with the system and how it updates itself in the flight, even though they don't all match. And so let's uh, shrink that down a little bit uh, so we can make use of this. And so again, gate 14, north 36. Uh, so let's hit N. The north and then three six zero five zero now look at this if we press enter now this is completely wrong because this is north 36 and we've got here north three you know it's north because there's the end there and so you must put the trailing zero on the end even though it isn't here you can see this is just a one decimal point this system has been upgraded now to two decimal points and so if you don't have the extra decimal, you know, the extra digit, just add a zero. And so there we go. Now we've got 36050, 36050. So that's okay. Enter that in and it's automatically going to go over to the longitude now. East, west. Well, it's west. And if we look here, west side 115090. And so west side 115050. Same issue as before, it's not West 11, it's West 115, and so we need to add a trailing zero, and there we go. Enter. Next page is going to come up is to confirm the time and the date. This is because it uses the GPS system to help with the alignment. If you select it to, you can see GMT, it's just about coming to 7 p.m. This is real world time, so this is as I'm recording it, the 20th of November 2022, 7 p.m. in the evening. OK, so I'll accept 7 p.m. I'll accept the date and that is it. That's the system now done. If we come over to the status page by using this one here, STS, we can see there that the alignment is taking place. We've got an alignment code of 10. I'll run through those in a minute and they can see how much time it reckons it's going to take. And this is not 48 minutes. It's 4.8 now 4.7 minutes. It's in tenths of a minute after the decimal point. So 4.5 minutes is actually 4 minutes 30 seconds. And so it's not 60 seconds. It's not 50 seconds. It's in tenths. So 4.5 is 30 seconds. And so 4.3 is going to be something like 18 or 19 seconds. You do the math. In any case, that is now taking place. And what I will actually do just to... Uh, Prove a point with this system on the first officers will leave his switch in the align mode uh, just so I can demonstrate something else. Now, rather than putting the whole coordinates in again, I'm going to demonstrate the second way. And if we scroll down here to get to the location ID, we can just use the airport identifier, which is, uh, you know, the four letter IKO, so KLAS. And so that's what we'll put in Kilo, Lima, Alpha, and Sierra. Enter. And you can see that then gives us the coordinates down here of what it thinks, north and west. Bearing in mind, this is not going to tally up with the gate coordinates. It's going to be the airport, which I believe they measure from probably the center of the airfield. And so to get that information, if we look on the uh, original 10.9 page, let's clear those ones off. 10.9. Uh, in top left corner, you're going to see the airport ID as well here as the position information. Let me try and make that a little bit bigger for the purposes of the video. That's as zoomed in as I uh, can get it. But in any case, you see it's north 3604-8. North 3604-8. On the west side, 115, 115091. 115091. Again, we've got the extra digit here, 1, 3. And so just be prepared to round that up or down depending on uh, the fidget. So 3 is going to be rounded down. If it was a 1, 6, it would more than likely be rounded up. So just be aware of that. 
Now, what I do want to show is how these do not completely uh, match for the reasons that we've just stated. And so let's come back to the uh, position page here. So for the very precise position on gate is North 360500. The airport uh, we can see there is 360480. And so there's a slight discrepancy. Same for the longitude. We've got 115.0500. Here we've got 115.0913. So that's even further off in the east-west perspective. So just be aware of that. Um, we'll take a look at uh, correcting for these discrepancies in a bit. Over to the status page here, we can see the alignment is still taking place. Now would be a nice time. I'll tell you what, I just need to get the uh, system over here. By the way, the third way that... Oh, let's get rid of that. The third way that you can put a position in is using a reference um, which clear. Oh, which was it? That was it, the alphanumeric. So on the position page, I'm not going to go through it all because it takes a very long time uh, to do. But you hit your AN when you're on position page, this one here. And then here you can put in a reference. And so let's just do it. I'm just going to really roughly do it. And, you know, if you were doing this for real, you would have to make sure you got it precise. But just to save a bit of time, let's come over to Las Vegas map really quickly. And we'll just use the uh, uh, departure page to get us a vague idea. And so we're here at Las Vegas. There's another airport down here somewhere near Boulder Hill. Uh, sorry, Boulder City. And so let's assume that from Boulder, oh, we need the uh, IKO. I need the IKO. Just one sec. I said it was going to take, uh, I said this one was going to take a moment. All right, so here we are. I found it on the maps page here. So we're here at Las Vegas. We know this, but let's assume for whatever reason we didn't know or we weren't at an airport and we were using the third method, which uh, Felix has programmed in. So we need the reference. So we're going to pick another one. Um, so let's pick Boulder City here. We can see the code is Kilo Bravo Victor Uniform. So on the reference there, we're going to put in this other airport. Again, you'd never use this if you were at an airport. So I don't know why it's there. I guess it's just there for the sake of completion. But for example, if you were in a desert somewhere that was not an airport, or you were a secret military base that was not listed as an airport, you would use this method. And so let's say there, KB Victor Uniform, or perhaps if you were landing on the ice somewhere at the North Pole. Kilo Bravo Victor Uniform is our reference airport. Okay, now we need to put in a bearing from the reference to where we are. So we don't say, oh, from here to here. It's the other way around. And so, again, I'm not going to be too precise. I'm just going to ballpark it to get through it quickly. So if we were stood here and we were trying to get to where we are here, it would be something like 320. And so I'm just going to put that uh, into the bearing there. 320, it is in tenths of a degree. Um, so let's say it's 320.1, just to pretend that we're being precise. And then, of course, we need a distance information. Um, so we can see here this airway here is 15 nautical miles. Looks like this is slightly further, so I'm going to say it's uh, 16. Uh, so let's say 16.2 nautical miles. OK, we enter that, and then it says, all right, do you want to confirm this? Enter to accept, so KBVU, KBVU, that's correct. And so there, we've gone through the three different ways of aligning the three different systems. Once that's in, again, you've got to confirm the time as well as the date. And then if we come over to the status, we can see that the alignment here has begun with regards to the airport. What this shows is, remember, we powered all the systems up all at the same time. As with the old Sievers, you must put in the airport as quickly as possible. I say as quickly as possible. Don't expect that you can have the system aligning in the background for 15 and wait to the last moment to put in the airport and then boom, it's ready. I know it does that on the newer systems. Not so here. You see, this one still says 4.8 minutes. Meanwhile, these are ready. Now is a good point to show one of the uh, main codes here. See here, nav1. That means the system is ready and it's in nav mode and it's working properly. And so code one is what you want to see. 
This means we can change the power supply, we can start moving. If we come over to here, we see here the code is number 2. And just to remind ourselves down here, code is number 10. So what's the difference? Well, 10 means it's still aligning. You can see it reckons it's got another 4 minutes and a bit to go. Meanwhile here, code 2, you see it says align 0, 0. This is actually aligned. This is ready and waiting. The only difference between mode 2 and mode 1 is it's waiting for us to flick the switch here from the align to the nav. And so it is ready. And so if we come down and see there nav 2, switch that over to nav. Now it's in 1. And so now both of these are ready to go. Flight Engineers has still got a bit of time. And again, that was because we aligned him last. Now, some of you are going to be saying, well, hang on a minute. If these three systems all talk to each other and they're all sort of backing each other up, you've given each of them a different position because you used a different method and clearly they're all not in agreement. Isn't that going to confuse the system? And the answer is, well, no, <laughs> in a word, because the system is going to self-correct and it's going to take what each of the three systems says they're going to talk to each other and they're going to amalgamate their results and give us the best precise picture. Now, if you put in the completely the wrong information, clearly the system is going to be very much confused. But again, it does update itself. We'll take a look at that once we're in the air. But for now, we're going to focus on system one on the pilot side and we're going to start programming in the route. Now, I have got a route already set and we showed it uh, on the on the map a little while ago. I've got the route here. This is what I'm going to program in. You can see it's maybe looks slightly different to what you'd have because I've edited it slightly just to uh, highlight a couple of issues. And so we're here at Las Vegas. We're going to go on the 01 right departure using the McCarran 6 departure. That takes us initially to uh, the Hector VOR. However, if we take a look at this uh, RNAV, there is an intermediate waypoint. Now, usually the McCarran 6 is going to be radar vectors from ATC. There is one intermediate point, uh, so we'll take a look at that. Let's get rid of that. We don't need it. Uh, so here's the McCarran 6 departure. And if you take a look here, our intermediate waypoint on the way to Hector, which is here, is radar. Romeo Alpha Delta Yankee Romeo. And so that I'm going to manually put in as my first waypoint. Now, this is an RNAV fix. This is not something you could do on the old receivers unless you were to get the lat long of this position and then memorize which waypoint number that was. And so with the position done, and you can still do this while the system is aligning, so don't feel that you have to wait for the alignment before putting in the waypoints. Arguably, there's that much to do on these aircraft. It may happen anyway. But in any case, let's come over to waypoint. Here you can see waypoint zero is our present position known as P. By the way, waypoint zero is always your present position. And what I mean by that is if we were to take off and then let's say we flew over here somewhere and then we said, oh, I want to go to from waypoint zero to here. It's not going to navigate us back here to the start and then fly from there directly to Hector. What it's going to do is zero, always be in our present position, is going to say, right, well, you want to go from here to here. So bearing in mind, waypoint zero to wherever means present position. So don't be taken off and think, right, that's it. I want to go back to waypoint zero because it won't work. Waypoint zero is where you are. So you are always at waypoint zero. And so waypoint one is going to be radar. So Romeo, hang on, enter, enter key to get into it. Romeo, Alpha, Delta, Yankee, Romeo. There we go, enter. So I just want to put some light onto the subject here real quick. So uh, let's turn this one on. Uh, it's starting to get a bit dingy. This one, this one, this one this one this one and yeah let's turn that on smoking signs nav lights logo 
that was like the mini break all right back to it then so back down here so we've got raider we know the next waypoint is going to be hector which is a vor beacon code hotel echo charlie now each one of these are known as the identifiers so whether it's the five letter ana fix three letters for a vor four for an airport they're all identifiers Unlike some of the newer FMCs, you can actually use an entire airport as a waypoint. Um, so don't, you know, it's not just the departure and the arrival and that's it. You could, in theory, use four letters and just fly past it. So Hector is in there and that's going to be the end of our uh, departure. Then it's over to the route. Uh, sorry, not the route, the charts page here for the route. Direct to tap. And so that's going to be Tango, Alpha, 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 Papa. OK, and then we're direct to and I've deliberately put this one in. And so there is a waypoint here. Uh, sorry, a VOR beacon, Echo, Echo, Delta. Its full name is Needles. And what we're going to do is instead of flying to the beacon, we're going to fly to a specific point based off of that Needles beacon. And so to start with, we're going to put in the identifier echo echo delta for needles and then we're going to put just the bearing info so 300 so if we change here from a to n that's going to swap between the alphas to the numerics and then we can type in 300 so we've got eed 300 enter now it's going to want us to put a reference in now the reference is the vor beacon itself needles and so once again echo Echo, Delta for needles, enter. Then it wants us to put in a bearing. And again, we've said 300. So we'll put in 300. It is in tenths of a degree. So, you know, you can be point whatever you want. We'll just keep it simple and go 300. So based off the needles VOR on a bearing of 300 degrees for a distance, in this case, of 41 nautical miles. So 41 and again, it's intense, so make sure you add the zero. You don't got to put the precede in zero, but you always got to put on the trailing zeros. And so there we go. Needles 300 for 41. Enter. And then we look at this screen. This is just to confirm the entire thing. It's not enter to use. In this case, it's the expand button to use clear to reject. So the expand is here. That looks good. And so there we go. We've got our custom uh waypoint there based off an existing waypoint in this case it's a vor beacon needles next waypoint is de niro of course coming into hollywood at los angeles it's got a bunch of actor names in on the anna fixes and then it's direct to finder and this is the final waypoint on our uh flight plan that then takes us into the anav approach we'll take a look at entering those once we're on the way and the only other point that I do want to put in is Los Angeles. And again, this isn't essential, but we're going to do it anyway. KLAX. And then, you know, if anything goes wrong in flight, uh, our last waypoint is at least going to take us to the airfield where we're going. So KLAX. If nothing else, it's going to prevent us forgetting where it is that we're going. All right. So there we've got the waypoints in. We can see we've got seven in total. The system does store potentially up to 98. Coming over, we'll have a little look at what some of the other things do. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to do in flight. Uh, but for now, uh, by the way, if you ever make this mistake, right? So I wanted to view the status page, but it ended up typing in here. In this case, V for Victor, because that was the button. Just clear it out. Hit your AN key here to go from your alphas to your numerics. And now, while this half of the keyboard is going to put your numbers in, this half is going to be your menu display and, and your scroll wheel if you need it as well. So now we can come over to status and there we see it. And so here we know it's ready. We can see that it's been ready for 0 0.2 hours over here. Status one and here status one. And so that means we're OK to change power source, start the aircraft, start moving. Because they all say nav status one, we know A, that they're aligned and B, that it's in nav mode and that it's ready to go. And so I will bring you back when we're on the way to the runway, because there's nothing else here um, to show at this point.
Hi, here we are. The guy is about to push us back. We've been given clearance. Um, do want to show one little thing if we come inside, just so that you're up to speed with what's going on here. We are departing. It's going to be uh, runway one left. Parking brake released. <laughs> I was saying at the same time as the guy. All right, so we got one left. I have that tuned in here. So if we take a look, one left here is one ten decimal one. Uh, we've got the final approach course, which is going to be our departure course as well, zero one four. And so that's in there. Another point to note: I've completely disabled weather for this tutorial, so that we can just do away without the distractions of ATIS and all the rest of it, just to focus on the nav thing. Uh, third thing here, if we uh, take a look on our actual departures page, again, we're doing the McCarran 6 departure. If we scroll down here to the initial climb, runway 1 left right, which is what we're doing, we had to climb on heading 014, which is runway heading, until crossing 2600, and then a climbing left-hand turn towards 200 degrees all the way to 7,000 feet. Top climb, by the way, is uh, assigned... Uh, by ATC, and so we're going to assume that they've said all the way up to 12. One thing to note, if we take a look here, 2,600 feet, actually quite high already at Las Vegas, so we're at 2,100 feet. So this is only 500 feet above the field, so we're climbing 500 feet and then a left-hand turn. And so to help me remind myself of that, I've actually put the 500 in there on the radar. And so once we begin to climb... We see that get anywhere near 500 or 2,600 here. We'll begin that left turn to 200 degrees. But actually put 200 in on your side, on the course side, just to remind ourselves there 200 is uh, what we're shooting for. Um, after that, we'll be towards Hector here, 112.7. And I see no reason not to tune that in. For now, we have... Um, what is it? 16.7, that's Boulder City. So do you know what? Let's go for Hector 112.7 on your side. Um, because once we've uh, performed this turn, we'll be going to Raider and then on to Hector. And so with that done, let's start the engines and I'll see you uh, when we're ready for takeoff. Fuel going in. Light up. All right, with all the engines started off, let's go with the after takeoff checks then. So it's going to be flaps 1, 5, 10, 20 for takeoff. Flaps 20. Over to the engineers panel and let's get the engines on bus. 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll close the split. Get the galleys on. 1, 2, Three, four, chillers, one, two, three, lav fan to automatic up here. And um, we'll get the packs on again. One, two, three, give them all. Get all the recirks, one through four. Gaspers on as well. Trim air will uh, turn some of these temps down to a more normal setting. With that, we'll get rid of the APU bleed. And we'll, uh, with everything there on, we'll cut out the APU as well. Get the aft cargo heat on normal. Everything there looks good. Uh, cabin climb rate, uh, we'll have it there just below normal. We're going to be climbing up to 38,000 feet. We put 1,000 on there to ease with the stresses. And so everything there is looking good. Back up to the top here. We'll close the starter valve. Everything else looks good. Slides have already been armed. Uh, we've got the lights on. We'll now get probe heat and uh, window heats on either side. And coming back down to the bottom, we'll get the transponder on, but uh, not active just yet. Uh, EPAS mode will cycle through to go around, back off to take off dry, and we'll get it into EPAS. Zero D rate, so we'll be roaring down with full power. And so one thing left to go, we've got there flaps 20, we'll do a quick flight controls. Forward neutral, aft neutral, rolling left, rolling right, put the right boot in. Put the left boot in and everything there looked good. One thing I did forget to do, I forgive, or rather beg your pardon, 
is forgot to light up your side of the screen. All right, weather radar onto standby and everything there looks good. And we're good for taxi, so turn offs. And with that, we'll release the parking brakes. Coming up top, anti skid is on. Body gear steering will arm that to help our ways around. And with that, yeah, I'll see you uh, momentarily. And as we approach the runway two, uh, sorry, zero one left here, lost wages ready for departure. We're going to come inside, and this is uh, just the ways that I like to do it. I'm not saying that this is correct or by the book. Again, it's some more tutorial on this. On this particular instance, because we're not doing the RNAV departure, but do stick around at the end for the RNAV approach, I'm going to keep it in radio mode. That's the way it should be. Uh, we've got the checks here. And so coming over to the autopilot, I'm going to turn on the master panel. Um, I've already set stab trim and everything, but you can see here the initial pitch for 16 degrees. So we're relatively light. And so I'm going to use the controls that I've got bound here to increase the pitch here. So there's 10, there's 12 and a half. There's 15. It won't move beyond 15, so there's 16. We'll keep an eye on that. And so quick check there. Flaps are set, so that's good. So as we line up, everything's set here. And so I'm going to roll on now. Um, when we do so, I realize you've got a bunch of uh, checklists. Personally, I find they take a bit too long, certainly if you're making a video. So we're just going to put the lights on now, save time. We've got this on. Strobe lights, wing lights as well. Make sure that we're all lit up like a Christmas tree. Come around to the engineers panel and make sure the packs are off for departure. And then as we swing in round to line up, let's get the transponder on. Whoa, that was a bit of an aggressive turn. <laughs> that was a bit too quick there. Let me just line up, get this done as quick as possible. All right, there we go. That'll do. So come to a full stop. Make sure body gear steering's disarmed, anti-skid. Everything there looks good. And so I know some people are having a bit of a bother with this, so I do just want to go over it. And so let's get the uh, weather radar on. And probably because we've got no weather, the only thing we're going to see is terrain, but that's uh, nice to see as well. Uh, let's bring the radar zoom to the minimum there, 25 miles all right, so winding them up. Wait for them to stabilize. Going to carry on increasing. We're clear for takeoff. Let's start the clock. We see that time in there. Engines are stable. And this here I find is useful as the toga switch. So we'll turn that on. We see the auto throttles advising, uh, advancing rather to the EPA setting. And that's because we've got that down here for takeoff dry. Zero D rate. Nice and quick acceleration. Probably a bit too quick, actually, because we're so light. Should have derated it a little bit. Rotate already, and up we go. All right, wheels in and shooting for 16 degrees. I just realized we've took off on completely the wrong one way. Never mind. So there we are through that heading and our departure was for uh, then to go 200 degrees. So we'll move the heading dial over to 200. And just to make things a bit easier here, we'll get that in. To make sure we don't bust through 12,000, I'm going to get that in. And we'll reduce thrust from takeoff to continuous. It's actually doing a right hand turn. Oh my goodness. So let's lower the nose. And big time. We're running out of speed there a little bit. Let's go to about 500. All right. So on this system now, and first way we want to go, if we come over to the flight plan, we see that there's no track selected. So in order to resolve that issue, if we come over to the waypoint page and scroll, sorry, uh, where are we? Legs page. Just press legs and then press enter and then enter. And that's going to take you to the first waypoint. Again, from current position. Could have done this from the ground, but if you've got radar vectors on departure, you want to hit this basically when ATC says, right, 
you've you've finished with your twists and turns we're now direct to raider now we didn't copy any of this so if we come over for example to the legs page here we've got nothing there if we come over to the waypoints there's nothing there and so after cleanup that's going to be a good thing so let's uh, start reducing flaps Let's increase vertical speed a bit. And we'll set that to uh, 250. That's going to be what we aim for. Let's go flaps 5. And while that's happening, let's come back here and then we'll get the packs on 1, 2, 3. But <laughs> doing my index departure was completely pointless when I took the wrong one way and, you know, was focusing on anything but just realised we didn't get these on. That's uh, kind of important. And let's get fuel heat onto automatic. All of that's on. And we'll get the supplementaries on. Back to the front. Uh, we'll turn the gear off. And we're getting very close, and to me that's going to be close enough. Let's switch to indicated airspeed. I'm going to reduce from continuous max to climb. And retract the flaps all the way. And let's assume now ATC clears us all the way to 38,000. All right, so while we're waiting for that to climb, let's look at cross-filling this. Now, you may want to do this before departure, but I'm just trying to keep it moving with as uh, many things happening at once so there's uh, not huge gaps. So if we come here over to the RMT, that stands for remote. It's by the letter Q. So if we hit Q, we got this little menu here. Going to use the scroll keys and whichever is the device, the CDU that you've used to put this in, Make sure that's the master. So we used our side and most of the time you're going to be flying as the captain. So scroll down or rather up to get the cross fill master in and hit enter. Don't press anything else because you need to rig these guys up. So again, remote. This one is going to be the slave. Hit enter and then come down here to the engineers one. And again, remote. Down to slave, hit enter. Okay, so these systems are all ready. This one's ready. And here you can see it's got seven waypoints in total. It's important to note when this process begins, the master is going to copy whatever is on there to the others. The others, if they have any information on there at all, it's going to be deleted and it's just going to copy what the master does. We understand that. We're okay with that. And so we've got here enter to go. So let's hit enter. You see here system B is ready. So first officers and system C is ready as well. That's the engineers to receive. So let's hit enter to start the transmitting. Takes about one second per waypoint. So if you've got 98 waypoints in there, be prepared to wait a couple of minutes. But that's a lot quicker than typing out 98 waypoints in triplicate. Now we see cross fill is complete. Uh, so we can come back on here to something like the uh, flight pan page. And we can see we've got 16 miles to go to Raider. Now if we come over here to the waypoints page, we can see they have been auto-filled. By the way, these orange dots here means anything that you do, that is the line it's going to manipulate. So if we come down here, it's going to manipulate the line tap and so on. So let's just check that's complete down here. Position, uh, sorry, waypoints. And they're all okay. Now, if we come over here to the legs page, sorry, not legs page, flight plan page, we can see no track selected. And it's going to be the same over here, flight plan, no track selected. Well, hang on a minute. We are on track. We just did it on this one. That's because all of these systems operate independently of each other. And so to resolve that issue, just like before, come over to the legs page, hit enter, enter. And now we're going towards Raider. So if we come back now to the flight plan, we can see we've got the similar kind of thing. And same over here. Flight plan. Sorry, legs page. Enter, enter. Now over to the flight plan. Now look at these. The distances slightly vary. We see this one says 10. This one says 8. This one says 11. That's because the positions in all of the three systems, if you remember when we aligned them, 
but slightly differently. We're passing 16,000, uh, so I'm just going to reduce to vertical climb. Reduce that to about 300 feet. And we're, we'll accelerate to about 310 knots or thereabouts, and then we'll resume. Let's release cabin crew while we're at it. So smoking signs. We'll get rid of these uh, lights that are no longer required. Wing and logo. Again, no weather. So 2992 from the floor all the way up to cruise. Just to keep things nice and simple. All right, that's going to be close enough for me so we can carry on with the tutorial. So let's now look at getting these guys updated. By the way, we've got an alert light here. That's to let us know that we're within a couple of minutes of the next waypoint. So you can see here, and now it's just switched over to Hector. Now, are we flying this? No. Why? Because we're in heading mode, not INS mode. And so if we want to make our ways towards Hector now, if we take a look at the uh, course page B, we can see here we need to fly 216 degrees. And we're currently half a mile to the left of where we want to be. We now see it's 0 0.6. And that is because here, if we look at the track, we're actually 16.6 .6 degrees too far to the left. So again, to make it from Raider to Hector. So this is going to get worse and worse. We're deviating further and further left of track. And just to get you an idea visually of what's happening. If uh, I bring us over to Sim Toolkit real quick. Here you can see our aircraft position. And here's Raider here. Here's Hector. And we're starting to drift further and further to the left. The reason there's that slight little discrepancy again our uh, on-flight computer is uh, slightly out of position, so it actually thinks we're a couple of miles further to the left than we really are. But in any case, you can see we are now beginning to drift further and further to the left. And so to put that right, we're in here. What we're going to do is fly what it says here. So it says uh, the... By the way, that M stands for mag magnetic track. And so we want to go 216 degrees. So I'm just going to put in there on the heading 216, which is uh, magnetic by default. Now look here at the track. You see that's getting less and less, and that's because we're rolling to the right. And then these will eventually match. And so at this point, I'm going to switch the autopilot over from heading to INS. And here from, where are we, from radio over to the INS as well. And that is going to switch our aircraft over into INS mode. It's not going to care about beacons. It's purely INS. And if we look here, we can see it's the INS System 1 currently in use. Each one of these dots here stands for 3.75 nautical miles. So you can see, yes, we want to be over here, but we went through the track. Remember, we were too far to the left. So you can see we're now two and a half miles to the left. And that's signified by this line here. So again, if that line was on that dot, that would mean we're 3.75 miles to the left. If it was over on the second dot, that would be 7.5 nautical miles too far to the left. And over here, obviously, 7.5 to the right. And the HSI has a little bit of range beyond that. It's about 8 nautical miles either way. And if it's any further than that, you're just going to see the line fully on the left or fully... Uh, sorry, fully on the right or fully on the left, whichever way around. I can see the autopilot, it's uh, starting to get us in line with where it wants us to be. And so it's going to straighten us out. And if we take a look here, we're currently 0 0.1. We're now in line and you can see the track, it's going to shoot through slightly. So the autopilot is going to correct a little bit the other way again as well. But now what we want to do is start to fix the discrepancies between these systems and make sure they're accurate. And so there are three ways it can do this. It can use GPS. It can use a system called triple mixing. I don't actually think the GPS method is integrated. So it's really got two methods, triple mixing as well as VOR DME. 
So if we take a look here in the top left here, we see the letter E. That means it's enabled. In other words, it is ready to update, but there's no information coming in, at least not yet. If the system is updating, we'll see a light here as well. System 1, that's going to be ours. And System 2 for the first officer. Those are the only two that update using VOR DME. The flight engineers here is pretty much going to be triple mix only. We'll go over triple mix. So what triple mix is going to do, it's going to take the three independent systems, the pilots, the first officers and the flight engineers here. It's going to get an averaged result between all three. The thinking being that the further you fly, the more these three systems are going to start drifting from one another. I mean, ideally, right, when you set off, you're, you're not going to do what we did and have three different positions. They're going to be the same. The further and further the flight flies, the longer the, the system's been running for, the more and more drift there's going to be. That's because the gyros and the accelerometers and whatnot down in the avionics bay are not perfect. They're nearly perfect, but they're not entirely perfect. And so if this system starts to drift a little bit to the left, this system drifts a little bit to the right, and this drift system drifts a little bit forward or back, it's going to average all those three out and then the result is going to be the triple mix and that result it deems more accurate than picking any one system by itself and that's generally going to be the case that new result known as the t mix or the triple mix is then going to be fed into each of the three systems as its new updated position and this is going to happen continually throughout the flight unless and until it can get a more reliable way of updating. And that more reliable way is using VOR DME. And that's what we're going to look at now. So the first thing we're going to do is pick a suitable beacon. And so if we come over to the map view real quick. And again, I, I disable my aircraft icon because I think that's cheating. But for now, for this purpose, let's temporarily enable it. You can see our aircraft and we're heading towards, um, what was it called? Hector, H-E-C. In fact, we did have that tuned in on the first officer's side, 1270. Um, so we'll see if we can find how far are we to go. 29 nautical miles, so we're not far away at all. Could be here. In fact, there it is, Hector. So this is a suitable beacon, but you can use any that's in range. So let's go with this one, 1270. So it's important you tune it on both sides because the first officer's side is going to be used for his system and the pilot's side is going to be used for his. You could use two different ones, but we're going to use the same one. So 1270. So let's tune that in on both sides. In fact, just to make a point, let's mistune my one by accident, 1275. We're going to come into the system menu now and we're looking to update it. So to do that, and this will happen continuously once you set it going, come over to the status page here and you want to scroll down until you see here you've got the change UDT. This is the update mode. Hit enter, sorry, hit the expand button to get into that and here you can see Updates are currently enabled. That's why you've got the option here to disable it. It's kind of a bit backwards, but it's what you want it to do, not what it says. So updates are enabled and that's confirmed by the E here. If we were to hit enter that and disable it, you see we lose the E. So hit enter, make sure updates are enabled because it says disable. And here you can see it's on GPS. And again, I don't think GPS is implemented at least at this time. So down here we've got triple mix. It's currently disabled. So let's go down and start with that one. So let's enable triple mix. Now you can see we've got the letter T here and that means our system is currently beginning to update using the triple mix method. So it's going to average out what your, what my one, your one and the flight engineers. And so let's come over to status and again we need to do this for all the systems. Scroll down, expand. We'll enable the triple mix and as well for the flight engineer. Status, scroll down, expand. Enable triple mix. There we go.
Uh, let's switch over to Matt Climb now. And so now these three systems are all updating by getting an average. The triple mix is very clever as well. One thing I forgot to say, let's say that you've been flying over the sea for, I don't know, three or four hours, whatever it is. And one of them is starting to drift off even further than the other two. The system is clever enough to realize, well, the two that are quite close together, let's say that yours and mine are quite close together. And the flight engineer system is going ways off. The system is clever enough to think, right, I'm going to almost entirely ignore the flight engineers. Not completely, but let's say I'm only going to give 5% notice to what he says. Our systems are pretty much in agreement. So I'm going to give 95% of the new calculation of the triple mix to what our systems say. It's going to spit out a new result and that result is going to be shared again between the systems. And as we've seen here, we could here choose to completely ignore. So if, for example, we thought, you know, the flight engineers is no good at all, we can, of course, disable this triple mix entirely. However, there's a much more accurate way of doing it, as we've said, and that is the uh, VOR DME method. So we'll take a look at doing that now. You can see here we're very close to our next waypoint. We've got about 0 0.1 miles, to, uh, sorry, one mile to go. And there we go, we've gone through it and it's now making a turn to the next waypoint. This would be a really good time to point something out and it's why I gave this crazy flight. I come over to the Sim Toolkit app. Usually what the uh, system does, I'll turn that down so I don't feel I need to shout. Usually what the system does is when there's a turn, it irons out the turn. So to make a nice smooth turn, we haven't actually had one yet. But when there's a turn that is over 100 degrees, I think it's 115, or it's, a, it's over 100 degrees anyway. Rather than trying to smooth out the turn, if you see what I'm doing here with my mouse, say go from here to here, it actually flies over the waypoint and then begins the turn. And you can see there's a discrepancy here, and this is because we need to align the systems. And what we'll do is when the system's aligned, we'll check back here and see if the aircraft is in a more precise position. And so in order to make sure they're really aligned, again, the triple mix, while it's very good, it's not going to account for the errors. And remember, we aligned these incorrectly. We gave each system a different position. It's tried to average it out, but it's obviously not good enough. And so let's look at doing that now with that turn explanation out the way. So come back into uh, explain here. What we're going to do is enable the VOR DME method. So again, on the update page, and if, you, if you've come out to that, just remember, over to the status, scroll down to the update mode, hit expand, and then you get the uh, menu here. We need to enable RNAV or area navigation. So we'll scroll down to RNAV, hit enter, and that is now enabled. We need to do that for every system. So just make sure we come over to RNAV, hit enter to enable. And we'll do it down here, even though the flight engineers doesn't do that. So let's enable. Okay. The flight engineers, if you think about this, if our two systems update completely because it's got radio navigation mode, the flight engineers system is going to realize, hang on, I'm the system that's way out of whack. Your two are in complete agreement. I'm out of whack. The triple mix by extension is automatically going to more or less ignore what he thinks and copy what our systems think. And so in order to get this working, we need to tune in a VOR DME here. And so let's come over to the position page just so we can see this in action. So there we can see the positions are actually quite close now. And that's because the triple mix has been amalgamating these positions. If we come over here, positions. So these are going to be very, very close now. Uh, I don't think I can pause. I don't want to pause it just in case it messes something up. So now what I'm going to do is tune in a suitable beacon that we can use. And I'm going to pick one that's a bit further away because I think we're a bit too close to this one. And in fact, let's use needles. We'll be going there anyway as per the flight plan. You can see the frequency there is 115.2. So we're going to use this to update. So if we come over here, we'll tune in 115.2. That's going to give the VOR DME information there. 
and you see right away my system begins updating ins1 there we see it lighting up and here we see the letter r so that's the radio update in other words the vor dme beacon the range information there incredibly accurate if we take a look at the lat long we see there's a discrepancy again now and that's because our system is updated via the radio yours is doing triple mix now we see your side is doing the radio as well we see their position too and that's because we're starting to get further away from the vor beacon there up to a point where it thinks you know it's enough distance now we can start making use of it i think just to keep things on the same page We'll go with 15.2 on your side. Notice when we use an invalid beacon, it throws. Oh, it's accidentally tuned in another one. And let's go for 15.70. It's still picked a beacon. Come on, there's got to be somewhere here where there's not a frequency. There we go. 15.85. You can see now your system is no longer updating and it switches back to triple mix. You don't got to wait for the alignment to complete. Um, just... You know, use common sense. It's never going to completely destroy anything. It's just, oh, well, if I can't get the update, I'll go back to where I was. But both sides tuned in on the same beacon. We've got the same range information on both sides. Both sides are now updating INS. And this is a continuous process. The entire time you've got a beacon tuned in, the system is going to continuously, automatically align. Let's come over to the legs page. And let's scratch that flight plan page. You can see now we've got 12 miles to go to tap. We've got the alert page on. And that is because we're cruising fast. In fact, I need to switch over to cruise and Mac mode before I go through the barber pole. It was a bit late there. Let's get altitude hold mode in. 38,000 feet. And with that, let's uh, release the passengers as well. All right, so we're up at cruise. And if we come back over to Sim Toolkit. Here we can see tap and uh, explain or rather the 7-4. The LTN says we're seven nautical miles away from tap. Now, in theory, we should not be offset by what seemed to be about three miles because our INS system has been updating the entire time. Uh, ever since we tuned those beacons in and it should the LTN automatically correct and if we take a look at that it's looking like it's very close we do got a custom waypoint in that doesn't show here but uh, you can see there we're getting very very close to tap indeed it's already turning to make a compensation for the next waypoint but i'm satisfied if we look at the gap there between uh, what it was and what it is now it's very close and it's just smoothing out a turn it's unfortunate we'll we'll see later on it it's uh closer in all right so come back into the 747 while we're doing this now we're coming you can see there why it was we're heading towards that custom waypoint that is not put down there on sim brief see we've got 41 miles to go And everything now looking good. So let's have a look at some of the other things that we said we were going to be doing while we're on the way. We've uh, covered alignments and the procedures there. We've covered entering waypoints to create route. Understanding identifiers, again, those are the either an RNAV fix, a VOR, an airport, or even your custom waypoints. And speaking of custom waypoints, let's take a look at putting one of those in right now. So currently we're heading towards this point here. Needles 300 degrees and it was, I forgot the exact range, something like 26 miles I think we said. And after that is De Niro. Let's say, I'm just trying to think what's the best way I can uh, point this out. All right, needles. Add to route. Tap. Needles. Right. 
Right, here we go. So after uh, De Niro, which we see here, and uh, we're going to create a custom waypoint. And so if I come over into, just to show you visually what I'm going to be trying to do, here we've got De Niro, here we've got Needles, and here we've got the uh, final waypoint. I'm going to create a custom waypoint, and it doesn't exist, which is why it's going to be custom. And let's say I want it to be here. So if we take a look at uh, here, we've got an existing waypoint. I'm just going to use this to grab the coordinates, but we're not going to use it. So Bojack, but we're going to create a custom one. So it's north 3452, west 11431. So coming back into X-Plane, of course, we could just use the name of the beacon, but you know, let's say it doesn't exist, and again, for the purposes of this. So it's going to be after De Niro, but before Finder here. So come over to the Waypoints page. You can see where we're going from, currently from TAP to this custom waypoint. After that is De Niro, so we're going to scroll down. We want to go to De Niro, that's fine. It's before this point, so select the final one that you do want to go to. So we do want to go to De Niro, it's after De Niro. Make sure De Niro's in between these orange dots. Hit enter once. This is going to move everything else down. De Niro there at the top. Here we type in the waypoint or the identifier. Now, bearing in mind, as we've said, you can use any waypoint that exists here, including airports, but you can also use your own. The way that you use your own, you simply type in an identifier that does not exist. Can type in anything that you want to me i find it easier to literally use the word cust c-u-s for custom and then i'm going to put two letters on the end because i'm almost sure that there is no six letter identifier by the name cust aa again type in anything that you want if it does exist it's going to take you there so if we hit enter well what do you know cust aa does not exist and so it's asking well this doesn't exist this identifier Tell me where you want it to be. And so we got the lat long here like before. So we're going to go N for north. And I'm just going to pinch the coordinates that exist near Bojack. I'm going to vary them just slightly just to prove the point. So we'll go north, 34. And then instead of 52, I'm going to go 53. And then we'll put, uh, let's just put 5-5 five, five at the end because it's, uh, it's going to be very precise there anyway. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be close enough. Hit enter and now we've got the longitude. So once again, we're on the west side. It's going to be 114. And then the uh, Bojack waypoint is 31.1. And so we'll go with 35 points. Uh, let's go 2-8 just because we can. All right. We'll hit enter to accept and then we get to review. So our custom AA, this latitude 3453 north, longitude 11435 west with the change. Clear to reject, that's this one, or expand, not enter to use. So the expand button is down here, not the enter here. So we'll hit expand and that is now in there. De Niro to custom AA and then on to Finder. Bearing in mind, this custom waypoint is now not going to exist here. So if we go onto the waypoints page here, we see it's from De Niro straight on to Finder. Here it's from De Niro to Custom AA to Finder. you got to run that remote thing again if you want to have everything synced up. I don't see any point in doing it now. We've already covered it, but that is something that you want to do. Bearing in mind, because we're not copying it, information on this such as the uh, flight plan page is going to be off because it's not accounting for the waypoints that we've put in whereas here clearly it is all right then so we've gone over the uh, custom waypoints let's have a look at something else we can do that's the identifiers Reference waypoints we've already done before, so that's where you take an, an existing waypoint that exists and you say, 
we want to be on such and such a heading at such and such a distance from a waypoint that already exists. But just to quick recap, uh, if we come back into Sim Toolkit, we'll use one of these uh, to do that. So we've already done one off needles, so let's try a different one. Um, here we've got one live. Bravo Lima Hotel. And so we can say based on there, we want to be 360, which is going to be up here and then whatever distance uh, we want. So let's see if we can get an idea on distances. Well, this leg here is 87. So that's going to be close enough, I think. Something like that. And so to do that, back over into X Plane. Back over to the waypoint page. I'll zoom in, try and make it nice and big. Oops, I accidentally hit that. Certainly don't want ATC. So waypoint page, come over to where it wants to be. So let's say after our custom waypoint, we want it here. Uh, so make sure custom is selected. Hit enter. And here we get to type it in. And so Blythe was... Bravo. Lima Hotel. And then put in a number again just to make it unique. So let's go something like and use this one to do it from the alphas to the merics. Let's go 0, 1, 2. Okay, guess what? Reference. All right, it's almost like creating a custom waypoint, but in this method it knows based off an existing beacon. And so reference, same as before, Bravo Lima Hotel, enter. Looks like there's two to choose from. You see here one and two. And so the first one is in the USA. And if we scroll down the second one, Kaz, would that be Kazakhstan? And either way, if we look at the east west, we see that this one is east here, 74 east. We'll go back to the first one, 114 west USA. Clearly, we want the one based in the USA. So we'll hit OK. Bearing. Now we were saying 360. Let's go, let's just go uh, 005.2. Again, it's going to truncate the leading zeros, but make sure you got the tails in. You see there, we're getting another update there. So this is 5.1 degrees from Blythe, which is also known as the radial. And now we got a distance. And we were saying something like 87. Uh, we'll just put, uh, let's go for uh, 95.1, just because it rolls through. All right, enter. And so now it's saying, right, custom waypoint that you call BLH012 is going to be based off the Blythe VOR BLH on a 005.1 radial at a distance of 95.1 nautical miles. Do you want to use that? Expand, use, clear, reject. So let's uh, make that. And now we're going from our custom waypoint AA to our custom Blythe radial there, 012. You can see currently we're on the uh, Finder to LAX. Good time now to try the Direct 2. So let's uh, swing us back round. Uh, we want to go, let's say, back to De Niro, which happens to be Waypoint 5. So we can either use the Waypoint number or the identifier name De Niro. So let's hit the Direct page and direct to, and here you type in the identifier. It's clever enough to automatically filter out the one. So if we start with the letter D, it's automatically going to suggest De Niro because that's in our flight plan. And so if, if we had another identifier starting with D, we'd have to use more letters. But De Niro is good. We see it flashing. So we'll hit enter to accept. There's the lat long. Once again, enter to accept. Okay. Now, the INS may or may not automatically steer the autopilot round. It depends. Were you more or less heading to it or was it ways far behind you? To find out, here we see on the course page, we can see we should really be on a heading magnetic 70 or 71 degrees. You can see we're about 20 miles to the right and we're, we're too far to the left. We're 170 odd degrees too far to the left. In other words, it's basically behind us. And so the easiest way, let's just dial 70 degrees into the heading. We'll switch this over to the heading mode. And again, dial 70 in. That's going to get the, the aircraft facing the right direction. 
it is building in a curve as you can see it knows that we're too far to the left it knows we're turning to the right and it's actually built in 19 nautical miles and a bit to allow us to complete that really big turn and again that's because it's clever enough to realize hey you're up at cruise and you're at 88 percent the speed of sound it's going to take you 18 19 or more miles to complete this turn and so as we uh, start to make our way round and those degrees begin to fall off this uh, discrepancy is going to get less and less and less and when we're at 90 degrees offset this is going to be counting down really quickly and i'm going to guess that we're going to shoot through that despite the turn having about 19 miles when we begun it so let's see in any case we're now proceeding direct towards de niro and again the course is going to give you any information with regards to direction and your flight plan is going to give you distances. You can use the expand button when you're on the flight plan page. And that's going to scroll through a few options. So we've got distances here to De Niro. Because again, that's where we're heading to. If we hit expand, it's going to give us time. It reckons three minutes. That's not going to be accurate. Yes, if we were flying directly towards De Niro at this speed, it's going to take three minutes. But bearing in mind... We've got this big turn to complete. So this is, again, one of the limitations of this device. Um, it's not going to account for the fact that we're still in a turn. So just bearing in mind of that, if we hit expand again, we're going to get an ETA. And again, same as before, based on uh, heading direct to, you can see that just added on a minute. Um, and you can see there the times for the subsequent waypoints. You can, of course, scroll through and get an idea on where you're going to be. And again, if you were flying in a route that you're not messing around with like I am, this is going to be fairly accurate. Just bearing in mind, the ETA is based on the ground speed that you're currently doing. Um, in this case, we're doing 506 knots. It does not account for the fact that as you get lower, you're going to start slowing down or anything like that. So again, take it with a pinch of salt and add time on as uh, you deem necessary. And then the other one is this DBW. This stands for distance between waypoints. So what it's saying is distance from De Niro to custom AA is 18 nautical miles. Distance between AA and this, you know, custom waypoint here is 22. Between there and Finder is 34 and so on. Uh, if we cycle through again to the distance, this one here is cumulative. So this is 23 miles from, you know, where we are to De Niro. 40 miles from where we are to De Niro to Cust AA, 61 miles from where we are to De Niro and Cust AA, and so on. In other words, if we scroll down here, it's saying we're 282 miles from where we are to LAX of following all the waypoints as prescribed. Uh, hopefully that is uh, relatively straightforward as well. All right, so we've covered those and reviewing. If we want to delete specific waypoints in the flight plan, Again, we come to the waypoint page and it's just a case of picking the one that you don't want getting it in between these orange dots. Um, so let's, for example, this waypoint here that we <laughs> took ages making. Let's say, no, we no longer want that one now. Make sure it's between the orange lines. Hit clear, hit clear again and there, gone. Um, let's see where we currently uh, custom AA. Let's delete that one as well. So click clear click clear again and it's gone simple as that and again if we if we want to change one and um, let's so for example say you know i don't want uh, de niro and there's something more suitable that i want uh, you to go to known as coop make sure de niro's selected hit enter on it sorry make this correction make sure de niro selected hit clear on it and now type in your new waypoint. So C, triple O, P, enter. And because that was the waypoint we were currently going direct to, just make sure afterwards that you rejig that. Because you can see it's currently thinking, well, you've thrown it off. We don't know what to do now. The easiest way to do that is to go over to the direct page and type in your fix there. So coop, enter, accept. And now we're good to go again. Um, if you scroll down, you can see we're back on course. Currently going direct to Coop. Uh, hit the course page. There you can see present position to Coop. So that's uh, working nicely there. 
whatever your current direct to it's going to have the information there so we've got 16 miles to go to coop providing again that you're in the ins mode up here which uh is good all right so we've gone through those reviewing inserting and deleting waypoints we've gone over direct twos let's uh we've gone over cross fills we've gone over how the system updates we've gone over the integration there with a the hsi so you're always going to have the ground speed on the top right and on the top left you're always going to have the distance to the next waypoint again assuming that uh here you're in the ins mode if you're not flying to a waypoint this is going to go out and so let's have a look at flying a direct track to make an example so you can see we're currently in 13.2 degrees let's say because of a wind um that we want to fly in fact let's add one in come over to the uh, instructor station real quick winds i'm just going to manually add a wind layer up at where we are about 30 some thousand that'll do 35 and just to make it simple so we're 070 let's have the wind coming from 160 so it's going to come right from the as we see it from our right hand side and let's give ourselves about 50 knots and we'll hit change you can see there it is the jinx as the uh weather immediately taking effect and now take a look at this if we come down here to the uh, status page uh, sorry the data page we can see wind 166 degrees at 49 knots we can see our heading currently 71 degrees but our track here is 66 now 65 so the reason for this five or six degrees discrepancy is because of that uh, crosswind and so if we were to fly in a straight line here 070 on the heading we're actually traversing across the ground at 65 degrees that's known as the track all right <laughs> i realize most of you are going to know that but uh and maybe somebody new so if we want to now fly no we were so we want to fly track 070 you come here so whichever page you're on come over to the course page where it says here track hit the expand button and here you type in then 70.0 degrees hit enter and now if we come over to the ins page the LTN 92 is instructed to fly us on a track of 70 degrees. And so because the wind is blowing us from the right to the left, the aircraft is turning towards the right to correct for that wind. So if we come back inside of the cockpit, we can see here... Now, uh, if we're coming a bit closer, so there's 60. So this one here is 17. You can see here the aircraft, it's pointing 75, 76 degrees, something like that. And again, if we come over to this one here, we can see our track currently 72 degrees. Our heading is currently 77. And so it's probably going to shimmy slightly over to the left to give us the 70 degree track that we asked for. Looks like it's uh, taking its time. And there we see 70.1. So it's very close. Another thing to note, see here we've got this flashing ALR. That stands for the alert. Uh, we also got uh, a similar one here flashing. That's to remind the crew, yes, you're in INS mode, but you ain't following any flight plan. You're following a specific track. The way to get out of that is quite simple. Go back to your direct to and put in an existing waypoint. And so if we uh, come over here to the November to have a look at the waypoints, let's look for a suitable one. And let's say, yeah, for me now, um, let's go to Coop. So C double uh, triple O P. And so direct to just type it in Coop. OK, accept. And now it's the case of navigating uh, rounds towards Coop. 
but Psychic's are trying to do it. So on the course page, once again, it's behind us, but this time now going direct towards the airfield. You can see these INSs continuously updating. We've got the uh, DME here. And again, if you're really close to the beacon, it's going to struggle. So make sure you pick one. But uh, I find like 100 nautical miles when you're high up is a, is a really good range uh, to make sure that that works. You can see there's a bit of system struggling a little bit. You see it's switching between radio and triple mix while it's trying to get that underway. In any case, it's working fantastic. So while we're on the way from Coop, let's have a look at doing an offset, something we've not yet discussed. So an offset, you know, you're flying from A to B. Let's assume it's a straight line. And then ATC says, hey, in fact, I can uh, perhaps uh, draw it on this a little better. So ignore where we currently are because we've just been making stuff on. So let's assume that we're following this green line here in the middle of the screen. And then ATC says, hey, we need you to offset to the right. And so if we're coming down here, the right is, of course, going to be over here with regards to the way that we're facing. Let's say 10 miles. So ATC says continue your flight plan, but be 10 offset 10 miles to the right or five miles to the left or whatever it is. To do that. Relatively straightforward. If we come once again down, just uh, cycling through to the course page. So hit course. You see here we've got the X track down here. Now currently we're 15 miles too far to the right. That's just because again we're weaving between all these different waypoints. You can see it's correcting for that error. The cross track is reducing all the time. Let's say now ATC says we'll keep it close so it's not got too much to do. Let's say three miles to the right. And so the way to do that, scroll down to the cross track menu, hit expand. And down here now you've got two keys. You've got your left here and your right here. And so hit the right one. And then simply nautical miles how far offset. And it can go up to 399.9 nautical mile offset. Which is madness. But for, uh, for our purposes let's just say 3.5 miles. So you hit right or left whichever side. And then you put your thing in. Again the leading figures don't matter it's the trailing that does so 3.5 hit enter okay and now we've got the uh, yellow light here ofs to indicate that we're flying an offset and it's now going to fly our flight plan as as it was three and a half miles to the right if we take a look here we're currently six miles to the right five and a half and again the autopilot is going to take a bit of time figuring that out bear in mind we've got quite a large crosswind now for the autopilot to wrestle with it will eventually figure it out but in my experience the ltn system is by far from being this as clever as it is today you know so oftentimes the systems today they already figure out ahead of time well if the wind's here and we're here then we need to approach from such and such an angle to get it bang on. This system, I find it usually makes the mistake first and then corrects for it second. So just uh, be aware to expect that. You can see we're already only two miles to the right now and we did ask for 3.5. So you can see here the aircraft turning to the right, realizing uh, it's, I, I'm not giving him what he asked for. And so I think with all of those things out the way, it's now time uh, to, well, for two things. First of all, how to exit the offset track and then finally uh, doing the ANAV approach. So it will be a bonus at the end. And this is now coming towards the end of the flight. And so we're going to set ourselves up for an approach into Los Angeles. And so let's get the charts while the uh, aircraft finishes doing what it's doing. And uh, if you don't have a Navigraph subscription, do feel free to pause the video and screenshot a couple of the relevant charts here. And so it's going to be the Hollywood one arrival. And so that's going to be this one. 
and we're going to come in via this waypoint here FNNDA call it Finder and that's because that was the last waypoint in our route uh, if we come over to the legs page here there you can see it Finder to Los Angeles and again what's in here is completely out of date because we've been messing with our flight plan and so it's going to be Finder on down here. Now, on the newer FMCs and the McDo's, all that you do is say, hey, it's the Hollywood one I have. You select it, you select which approach you want to do, and it fills all the waypoints in for you. That's not the case in this system. We need to put the waypoints in. But it's doable, again, as long as you've uh, got a bit of time. I'm actually going to slow the aircraft down a little bit just to buy myself a little bit of time. So let's switch from speed to uh, from Mac to speed mode. And we'll shoot for 250. All right. So we've got the Arnav approach. Uh, sorry, the Arnav arrival, the so-called star. And then we're going to do the Arnav approach as well. Uh, where we're shooting for 25 right in Los Angeles. Uh, so... Again, ILS, we know old school and no reason not to use the ILS. But let's assume that this airfield either doesn't have an ILS or that the INS, <coughs> sorry, the ILS is currently out of commission. So I'm actually looking for the Arnav Yankee. There we go, 2-5 left. All right, so let's have a quick brief then. So the star, the arrival from Finder on down. Uh, we'll put some of these waypoints in. Here's Sea View. This is the final waypoint of the star. And Sea View here is going to be the first waypoint of the Anav approach. Then it's from Sea View to Crane. All the way on in to uh, Gate, then Hunda. And if we take a look here, Hunda is going to be our uh, initial fix to Gigi, which is going to be the FAF. There's Gigi. And then we're on down to uh, Ladle. And then finally runway 25 left. So I'm going to have to get my skates on and type some of this out. And again, there's a lot of typing. Um, really, you should put all of these waypoints in that you're going to be flying through. I'm going to try and, uh, so, you know what, let's see how quick I can do it. So we're currently, oh yeah, we're still on the offset. And if you look, it's, yeah, you can see it is slowly catching up. It's Again, we asked for 3.5, um, I think it was miles. So we're 0 0.2 miles. Come on, you've got to get that offset going. That's actually one of the very few aspects of the system here that seems to... Let's just check, actually, that we are... Oh, I know why. It's because we're doing a direct 2. To do an offset needs to have a from and a 2. So we're currently going direct to, so there's nothing for it to offset from. But if it was from Coop to Finder or whatever it is, uh, then it can. Uh, how are we doing actually with regards to... Oh, well, we're very close, so we'll see it. So once it gets once it gets to Coop and turns back around to Finder, then it will be uh, on course. And you can see it's got about... Uh, 11 miles between the two. So we will check back on that. But for now, let's go to waypoints. Now, clearly, Finder's the first one that begins this whole process. KLAX is going to be the last one. And so I'm going to hit Finder and hit Enter just to keep punching it down. And so the first one is going to be MDLER. Let's call it Midler. And I'm just going to type these in real quick. So there's Midler. Enter. OK. Enter again. Monroe. Enter to accept. Enter again to push it down. Uh, then we've got Hollywood itself. Enter, enter. We've got the alert here because we're, you know, within two minutes of the next turn. Got Bruin. And so this is going to task saturate you. Uh, I strongly recommend not doing this on Ratsim until you've had a couple of goals at it and you feel comfortable with it. 
make sure in your notes or your remarks or what your aircraft is capable of, you make it clear to the in, to the controllers or whoever's going to be looking at your flight plan what exact system this is, the LTN-92. It does have a code for it. You'll have to look at what that code is, you know, what the aircraft, what your navigation, you know, the, the so-called performance-based navigation, what your aircraft is capable of doing. What up? But uh, to begin with, yeah, I suggest like what I'm doing here, just get rid of the weather and do do as you uh, want. Speaking of getting rid of the weather, I've made a mistake there, so hit clear. N e i l e. Okay, enter and then C view. All right, so that is the final waypoint of the star. Enter, enter. Now we're over to the uh, approach. And I am just going to save a bit of time uh, here. So, see view. Crane is clearly essential. I'm going to skip out some that don't have a restriction. Again, you shouldn't do that, but uh, just to save time here. So, Crane. Uh, Tarok has got a, res a, a, a subscription. A restriction. nine and then time out again you can't put the restrictions in because it doesn't care for speed or height you have to manage that and then we've got dime out but because you can see the waypoints and the distance it is doable it's just again intensive but it's the intensity that what makes it fun right in my opinion although it's very nice to fly around the new airbuses and don't get me wrong i do it myself it's a little boring in the simplicity of it you know they're very easy this one is going to keep your hands full the entire last 200 or so miles of a flight because really you'd be typing this in uh, long ahead. Uh, so we've got Gate, then we've got Honda. And the system doesn't care for or know that you're doing a star or an array. It doesn't know anything. It just knows you're going from A to B the entire time or A to Z via A, B, C, D. You know, that's all it knows and the only thing it cares about And then ladle, L-A-D. Now, one thing I do want to cover here, and this applies whether it's an RNAV approach or not, you can put your miss approach point in. So not where you go to when it goes wrong, but the point which is basically your minimums. And if we look down here, it's going to be signified by this M here. I don't know how you exactly get the coordinates of this position. You see, it's based on a height down the uh, approach. But let's just assume that you could figure out the coordinates. You go enter here. You use this character here, the zero, with the minus to get the minus. And then you type in map. That's going to be your missed approach point. You can only put in one per flight plan, which makes sense. Hit enter, and it's going to want to know your lat long. Um... I'm just going to make one up and I'm going to put it more or less where the uh, runway is just so that we've got one in. And so here's uh, 25, should we say 25 right or left? 25 left. Okay, so 25 left. I'm going to use this position here. And so if we come down here to the charts, we see there's 118.23. Well, it's going to be to the, sorry, the north-south first. There's 3357, there's 3356, so 3356, 1, 2, 3. So again, not saying this is legal at all, it's just to show you how to set this up. So we've got 3356, 3, and then it wants the last thing. Looks like it's going to be a, a hair above, so let's go for 3, 2, something like that. Now we need the west side, or the longitude. And so down here, 118, 23, there's 24, so we know it's going to be 22, so 118... 22, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Yeah, so let's go there. 118, 22.5. Uh, let's go 4, 5. There we go. And so now we've got a missed approach point in. And once again, expand to make use of that. 
and then Los Angeles. So that, that'll do for me. You could knock yourself out and put the coordinates of the waypoints, uh, the runway in. You need to be disconnecting before then, Arnav or not. And speaking of Arnavs, you come over here to the approach, uh, look for the minimums. You can see we're Elnav only. We don't got Elnav Vnav. We certainly don't get the, uh, the vertical guidance here. And so our minimums is going to be the lowest grade. In this case, 536 on the Radal. And so let's go ahead and dial that in now. So there's five. That one's going to be six. And so there. It's going to be about there. All right. With that in, let's have a quick update. So we'll come over to the remote page. Let's go to remote master cross fill. Yes. Remote, remote slave. Yes, I'm not going to bother doing the flight engineer, so we'll hit OK. 24 waypoints. Yes. System B ready. System C. You can see it's not ready because we've not set up the flight engineer. And let's transmit. Again, about one second each. And I'm going to begin descend. We're at 38,000 out hold mode in. Let's come down to uh, 28 just to get it going. Vertical speed. Down we go. Make sure we don't drop through 28. I'm going to get rid of auto throttle. I'm going to manually pull the power levers back. And I'm going to increase my vertical speed nice and quick to get it going. All right, cross fill complete. And so let's have a look at the course. We're currently Finder on the way to, let's call it Molder. So we're already on the initial stage of the arrival. So again, I'm really far behind. So if we have a look here, we're currently somewhere along here. You can see this bit here is not to scale, but let's turn these uh, triangles off so we don't uh, cheat. See here, this is 58.3 miles, so we do got a bit of room. How far we got to go to get to Mulder? So if we come over to the flight plan page, currently 47 miles to this point here. There you see we need to be at or above flight level 190. I think we can do this. In fact, this is weird. Uh, Bruin, we need to be below 30, but above 24. So you know what? Ah, uh, there's fine. There's no panic. And so you need to look at this and begin complying. And so, as we've said here, Bruin 280 knots, that's mandatory. Below 30, but above 24. Here we need to be below 32. And so I think if we go for 30,000 feet, that's going to be a nice uh, midpoint. And so we're almost at 30,000 feet. Uh, so let's dial that up to 30. And so now when we're coming down the arrival, I suggest keeping this flight plan page on this screen. So this is going to continuously give you distances. And you're going to have to continuously refer to a chart like this to comply with the height and or speed restrictions. So you can see the first one, we just need to be below 32 by Hollywood. See, we've got 71 miles to go. And I think we're already below uh, 32 <laughs> We are, and so we're actually a little further away than I thought. But we're still doing this offset. And now that we're on the legs, let's have a look. So if we come over to the course page, you can see we're currently 6.1 nautical miles further to the right of where we should be. And... Uh, it's a shame, um, I don't think I, I'm just thinking, can I show the approach on the sim toolkit? Just, I just feel like I need to prove that this offset thing works. In any case... You can see we're off track 3.9 miles to the right. In fact, this will do. Remember, we asked for 3.5 a little while ago. You can see it's turning. 
but still 70 degrees to the left. That's just because it's uh, turning from one waypoint to the next. Uh, speed running out there. Let's go for 310. Auto throttle on. And there you see it. Look at that. We're 3.6 degrees offset and we've got 3 degrees of the turn left to go. That should bring us wings level pretty much bang on 3.5. It was 0 0.1 and there we go we're offset on the track so now how do you get rid of the offset and again you can see we're on offset there with the yellow flag both radios constantly update but sorry both systems here continuously updating their position based on the ins and the flight engineers the triple mix now him is probably going to agree with us pretty much by now so if we come over to the where are we the position page And we'll use the position page here. By the way, these are already going to match because they've been aligning on their own right using the R mode here, the radio. We see those lights on. So we see position there. I'm just trying to show the camera. 2808, 12, 95, 99. So these positions are very, very close now. Again, even though this one, if you remember when we aligned it, we did that crazy method based off a of guesstimation. It was so far off and now it almost matches and so that's great. All right and again as before this one in terms of flight plan no track selected and so to get that right we're currently on the way to Midler let's just call it or Mulder. Probably the easiest way if we come over to legs page we'll just type it in M molder that's fine accept accept and now this thing is going to know as well that's what we're doing and it's going to automatically progress through now because we've got this 3.5 mile offset we want to get rid of that two ways to do it the first is as we did here we do a direct to molder and that's going to cut out of the offset but it is going to lose our from which is finder we we want to keep the from so if you want to do the direct to, you know, you do your direct here, you type in molder like we just did. That's the first way to get rid of the offset. I'm going to use the other way. So if we come over to the course page, you see it's typing in. So just clear that switch here to the numeric over to the course page. Scroll down to where we've got this off track and here you see it's set right 3.5. Hit expand and we're going to go right and zero that's if we off track to the right by 0, 0.0 miles that's now off track as soon as we hit enter notice the offset light here disappears and that's because we're going to go off back currently we're three and a half miles off track to the right and you can see it's already begun a left hand turn and that's to get rid of that offset we see 3.4 uh, that's going to decrease quite quickly now 3.3 and the autopilot is going to bring us right on down the money. In fact, uh, it's still off scale. Otherwise, uh, I could have shown you on here. Never mind. I'm sure you can see what I'm saying in combination with what it says here, that it was doing what we were saying. All right, so let's keep an eye on this. We see we're currently eight miles from Mulder. I'm going to keep the flight plan on the left here. So I've got the uh, ranges here. We'll keep the course data on the right here now that that's in sync. We've got an alert. So that's letting us know we're within a couple of minutes of the next waypoint. And again, can use on the flight plan the expand page here. You see here it's uh, about a minute to go now. And then it's on to Monroe. And there's our ETAs. And the distance between the waypoints. You would use this distance between waypoint, by the way, to check that you've typed all these incorrect in correctly, not in incorrectly. And so if you saw the distance between waypoint, you were scrolling through, and then one of these said like 5,000 miles, you would know you've probably mistyped one of the letters and it's happened to match with a waypoint that was halfway around the world or something like that so just scroll through and if we go through including our missed approach point here 
and that is itself two miles from the airfield center so i'm satisfied that all of that is correct and we're currently from two so we're currently 12 miles from monroe so let's uh have a look at this and so yeah we're going from Mulder to monroe so we're currently on this section here we need to be at or above flight level one eyes another way you can do by the way if we uh, come back to the expand distance between waypoints take a look at this from Mulder to monroe distance between is 15 miles if you take a look here Mulder to monroe 15.1 so we know that matches you don't get the point one here and so 15 monroe to hollywood 15.5 well rounded that off it's always going to be up to 16 so that matches hollywood to bruin 14.6 will round it off that's 15 so that matches bruin to avatar 15.0 so 15 and so on and so there's several ways you can check everything here looks good one thing the manual says, if you are using this to do an RNAV approach like we are, it must be tuned into a VOR beacon at least five minutes before you begin the approach so that it can be as aligned as possible. Another thing, doing your offset flight plans like we were doing, it will not allow you to do offset routes when you're at or below 10,000 feet. And so, you know, the offsets only for higher up. And so now coming in, we have uh, gone through, I think, everything. I'm going to show you the only page on this that doesn't work. And that is this page here, cat. And so if we hit that one, you can see catalogs placeholder. This is where you would store routes for multiple flight plans, where the airline would store them, where the airline would store custom fixes that are used internally for the airline that is this page here everything else works and in fact it'd be a good time while we continue down this star to just uh, overview what all these pages do so the first one here menu is going to be your position page and so this shows where you are and it's also where you do your alignment at the beginning if we come over here to the uh, course page b that's going to show you which leg you're currently on. So we're currently Monroe to Hollywood. It's going to show uh, any waypoint identifiers. It's going to show you your desired track in magnetic here. And so we're currently 252 degrees desired. It's going to show you cross track error as well as your track angle error. And so all of those are down there. And remember, if you've got your expand here, button you can choose to manually put in a cross track or a direct heading uh sorry a track heading as well as the offset that's what i'm trying to say it's been a long tutorial you got your legs page here this is going to show you from to your waypoint numbers so we're going currently from nine to ten which happens to be hollywood to bruin you can use this to switch which leg you're actively on if you wish. Again, you just type it in. You've got your flight plan page. And again, if it overwrites there because you're typing, just switch this one to get from your alphas to your numerics and then come over to flight plan. This is going to show our current flight plan together with the distances. And again, as we've gone through here, expand to go through the various options there. You've got your direct to page and here to go direct to any waypoint that is in you know your flight plan and again you just got to type part of it in and it will auto fill from what's in your flight plan we've got the data page um here which is going to show basically what the thing's reading so if you scroll down you've got aircraft acceleration altitude frequencies pitch roll and so on all things that the device in the electronics bay you know the inertial reference systems the gyros the accelerometers all of that box of tricks is constantly using to figure stuff out catalog is the one that doesn't work uh the remote button we've been through to, uh, you know to keep things update and then finally you've got your status page here 
which shows, you know, currently the system's been up and running for almost two hours. And again, we're in mode one, which is uh, up and running. So back to the flight plan, we're currently 17 miles to go to Avatar. And so actually we've gone through Bruin already. So in my yakking, I forgot to apply, uh, comply with that. So let's uh, reduce 280. We had to be 330,000 to 24 where we just about complied with that. We need to be down to 24,000 feet by Avatar. Um, and above 19. So let's go for 19. And let's bring the throttle back. Turn auto throttle off. Now, Avatar, we've got 12 miles to go. We need to be below 24. We're currently at 29. I'm aware we're too fast, so I'm going to put the boards out and try and catch up. That's if I move that down there. That'll do. So here we are now on the Hollywood one into Los Angeles International for the ANAV using the LTN 92. Got the alert there saying less than two minutes to go. This does not care that we're too high, too fast. Again, none of that matters. It's just navigating us down here two dimensionally. If we put the uh, aircraft icon on briefly, you can see we're exactly where we should be now because, again, these things have been aligning and updating the whole time. In fact, it's probably a good time to use a more suitable nav beacon because these are getting further and further away and as we drop down lower, uh, they're going to fall off. Uh, so let's see, Los Angeles. Let's just use this to grab the um, VOR beacon. And so we're going to use 1360. So we'll use that for both sides just so that the thing as we're supposed to can keep updated. And so let's go 13. Notice as soon as we change it, it stops updating. And as soon as we get the frequency in, we get the range, it'll start updating. There we go. So we'll make sure that's on both sides. 1360. We're currently on the way today. We've got six miles to go. So let's come back here. We'd to be at or above 17,000 feet by that time. So let's keep the descent going. Vertical speed. We need to be 280 knots or less. So let's shoot for 280. We'll get the auto throttle back on. And let's try catching up. All right, so down here, go around. Speed mode is selected. So that's fine. Coming back here, anything here. So if the humidifier was on, we need to get rid of that. I didn't turn it on, so that's fine. Packs can remain on, that's fine. I will get rid of the automatic fuel heat. I uh, will open the reserve tanks. Should have perhaps already done that. Make sure that's flowing through. All right, so things are done back there. Up top, turn off lights. We'll get everybody seated nice and early so I don't got to worry about that. Wing lights and logo lights. Main lights to go. So there we go, 280. Currently heading towards Nade up. Or Wad up, sorry. And we need to be at or above 15. So let's keep that descent going. The vertical speed. And in fact, uh, if I go IAS, that's going to knock the auto throttle off, and that's basically our level change. We don't got to worry about the weather, so 2992, and here we can see LAX now just 66 miles to go. Minimums, as we discussed before without any sort of vertical guidance on the LNAV only is 536 and we've got that in there All right there's the notification I'm going to get rid of the boards now I think we've caught up wad up four miles to go uh, 
And we are at or above 15,000 just leveling off. Let's put some power on manually. After that, Nelly, 14,000. So we are at 15. Let's put out hold mode in and we'll preset 14,000 for the next one. Nelly, five miles to go, so we're clear to descend down to 4,000. So let's chop the power back to IAS and alt hold so we don't drop through. That's going to try and maintain speed. I'm going to put a bit of power on, getting a bit too slow. All right, and at sea view, it wants us at 270. So you know what? We'll pre-select that. We'll get the auto throttle on. And we need to be between 12 and 14. And so we'll wait till we've gone through Nelly. we got two miles to go. Now, we're still not got to Nelly, even though it's jumped to sea view. And so a quick way to verify. See, currently the distance to sea view is 10, but Nelly to sea view is 9. And so you'll know you've gone through Nelly once it says 9 here. And so there we go. And so now we're good to descend somewhere between 12 and 14. So I'm going to go straight to 12. And we use vertical speed now as well as auto throttle. Speed 270. Let's increase the vertical speed some. And if we go heads down and see 7 miles to sea view. And so we got to lose... Uh, oh, no, we don't, because we're already below 14, so it's fine. So we can perhaps soften that descent a little bit. All right, so from sea view, that's the end of the start. We're on to the uh, arrivals page. Max 270, well, we know that. And then we're on to crane. So it needs to be 10,000 after sea view. And then down and down and down. So without trying to do too many other things now i'm going to try and see if we can maintain the camera in some sort of usable way where i could got access to the autopilot and everything crucial so let's i think that there we've got dme to the vor there and so crane 12 and if we take a look here, sea view, we can see sea view to crane 99, so that's 10. So we've got another mile to go. And then we can drop the height down to uh, 10. And so there we go. We can continue. So let's reduce down to 10,000. Let's increase the vertical speed, get that into VS. Down we go. Max 270. Well, this is a good time now because then we got to drop down to 240 really. Well, it needs to be 250, but they say 240. So if you mess up a little bit, you got 10 knots of wiggle room. But you should really plan for 240 so that you do got that wiggle room. So 240 it is. And I think, uh, so I don't forget, let's just uh, do this now. We'll put all the lights on so we can really focus on this approach. So Crane, five miles. We need to be at or above 10,000 until that point. And we're just above 250. We're beginning to settle. Let's ease off. That's already done it. Crane, so three miles to go. So this is going to be nice. Let's hold it here. 10,000. Power coming up. And we're now on to Tarok. There we see the left turn as we've gone from 270 on to final approach, which is, by the way, 251 degrees. So let's put that in on the head in. Let's try and pretend like we, we mean it. 
251 keep everything up to date we'll do the same with the course and we continue descending down to 9,000 now. I think what I'm going to do is rather than keep stopping, I'm going to turn that off. And that's going to keep the descent going all the way. It's not going to care what we've got in the window. And I'm just going to pay super close attention to the uh, vertical speed here. So we're currently on the way to Dynamo. Uh, so well, we're still not coming to Tarok. Um, let's increase vertical speed a little bit. Dynamo is going to be about now, so yeah, we can drop through nine now. I got to get rid of the auto throttle. So Dynamo three miles, so we're definitely on this leg now. So we'll just keep putting the height in there to remind ourselves. So we're down to eight. Only 8,800. Six miles now to Fueler. Well, we can see we know we're at Dynamo when it says four. So we've got 500 feet for the next mile. And once that jumps over to four, we'll be clear down to seven. And there we go, four miles. So we're on the way to Fueler now. So 7,000. There we go. Let's go, flaps one. And I'll just put a tiny bit of power on just to get the uh, horn out. Three miles to fueler, and then we're good down to 5,000. Once gate reads nine miles, currently reading 12. Now 11. Now we've got 400 feet to go. So I'm just going to ease that descent off a tad. Put a bit of power on. Gate 10. We need one more mile. 20 feet. 10. 0. And there we go. 9. So that was as close as it gets. All right. Down to 5. And I will put the out cell on here. Don't want to drop through that. Let's keep the descent going. Auto throttle is on at 226. And we're direct to gate. For 8 miles to go. Let's take a look at landing speeds now that we've got first little bit of time to breathe. Uh, so over to landing perf. I'm going to read data from the sim. Be lazy. Um, when weather is nothing. So we just need the airfield information. So if we come over here. Our runway is 11,100 feet long. Elevation. If we take a look here. So the nearest 100 is going to be 10. Uh, runway heading is uh, 251 to the nearest 10. And again, all of this is standard, so that's correct. We'll set the bugs accordingly. And uh, with that, we can focus again on the uh, get rid of the star, because we've done with that. Let's focus on the approach. So we're currently on the way to gate. We've got four miles to go. And we need to be uh, no lower than 5,000. And then we've got Honda. We can uh, begin referring to the vertical profiles here after gate. So gate 5,000, three miles to go. That's going to level off. And then look at this, less than 10 miles to go. And so, so we don't run off with things. Let's go flaps five. I'm going to reduce speed to 210. Check in the notches there. We can go all the way back to 200. Now we're on the way to Honda. So let's focus on the vertical profiles here. So down to 3.6. So let's get that in. Making sure that we don't drop through. So let's go vertical speed. Let's go to about there. Let's go flaps 10 and continue to reduce the speed to a 180. I got to dump the gear. Let's get uh, auto brake ready. Where are we? We'll go auto brake minimum. 
Let's uh, arm the speed brakes. And again, I'm just going to keep my head down and assume that we're in the clouds. And so clearly we can see outside, but uh, if this was our nav only, we wouldn't. So we're currently direct to Honda and autopilot. We're on with power. We've got the height set 3,600 feet. We're not going to drop through the bottom. Under 0 0.2. See, we've got about 200 feet to go, so everything there looking good. And after that, it's Giggy at 1,900. So let's pre-select that, 1.9 for Giggy. Honda 02, one mile to go to Honda. Let's drop the uh, flaps to 20. And we'll reduce speed 170. Again, keep my eye on the bug there. All right, 10 miles to go to Ladle. Did I forget to put Giggy in? Well, we can see it's five miles and uh, four miles away from Ladle. So I need to be there in six. And so 1,900 vertical speed. Again, it tells you why you really need to plan this, you know, on a longer flight ahead of time. Now, clearly we could be switching over to the ILS at this point, but of course, long before even... But we're not going to because we're doing the RNAV. So, Ladle is there, but Giggy, which is the last defined point, uh, again, is four miles from Ladle. So, we've got about four miles to get down to 1,900. Actually, descending really slowly. So, let's increase that descent rate. And let's go flaps 25 and continue reducing speed where we bugged for. It's going to be about 145. There we go. And when can we go flaps full? I always forget. 160 or less. No, sorry. 180. Well, we're below 180. It's 160 using the alternate flaps. Well, there we go. Flaps full. And we've got about 300 feet to go. And we're now on for ladle. It says five miles. So we know we're about a mile from Giggy. We've got about 100 feet to go. Power on. Come on, quick. It's on the auto throttle, getting a little low there. And there we go, we are recovered. Now that's correct into our missed approach point. And so at this point, uh, ladle 04, we need to be descending down. And so let's just uh, ignore this, get a vertical speed down. If we take a look, based on our speed 140, we need to be sending about 750 feet a minute, so around there. And there we go. I've got to call that visual now. Again, it's going to that missed approach point that we didn't really know where it was. And you can see our guesstimation was actually, actually not to, let's leave the autopilot on. Let's see what it does. See the uh, weather radar picking up nothing but ground returns. Oh, it's because we've got that horrific wind. What an idiot. I left the wind on. It, <laughs> look at it trying to correct for that wind. Oh, dear. Uh, what a mistake. What a mistake. What a ruin to the end of the... Uh, video there. We've got rid of the wind now. And it manners it got its work cut out for us. Man, I feel, you know, I was trying to make it all, oh, we'll not look out the window and we'll pretend it's fog. There's no winds, there's no weather. And meanwhile, there's like an 80 knot wind or whatever. It, no, it was about 50 knots, wasn't it? All right, there's the minimums. minimums. And runway is in sight. And so I'm going to disconnect. Get rid of the auto throttle. And it's visual from here on. And so 
I do feel a bit bad, but you know what? I'm not about to re-record a two-hour tutorial because I forgot to disable the winds coming down final approach. Oh, my goodness. 50-knot crosswind trying to do... Uh, get creative with the RNAVs there, but... In any case, that's going to be the end of the LTN tutorial you see here. And it says, you know, to disconnect before you would even get to that missed approach point. But um, in any case, had there not been that horrific wind, I think we would have been fine. Coming in a little hot there, but it's uh, it's all good. And there's the touchdown. Not too bad at all. Check reverse. And we're not left ourselves with too much runway left. Let's give it full reverse. We do got auto brake min. 120 knots. What we do have on our side is we're not too heavy. Let's clear out that caution. Dancing on the rudder pedals a little bit. But it's uh, only to correct the uh, missed dodgy sort of approach there on landing. And again, just default scenery here. At LAX, but very nice scenery. And there, the uh, famous sort of, don't know what you'd call it, pyramid spiral thing in one. All right, that's going to do it from me. I'm absolutely exhausted. I guess you are too. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, take care. Bye bye.